has degrees from Cornell, John Hopkins, and the University of Iowa. He's the author of four books of poems and three books for teachers. He's Vermont's reigning poet slam champion uh, and regularly hosts slams throughout the state. And in his words, I've been writing and publishing poems since 1965 and teaching for a living. I hope the language of my poems is conversational, heightened only by a lucky image or a cherished surprise. The Perfect Heart, my book of selected poems from May Apple 2010, reflects that hope. I do not write slam poems, but I brag that I am Vermont's reigning poetry slam champion since 2004. I won by just one tenth of a point. I visit schools and libraries throughout New England with workshops for all ages above seven, sometimes just writing workshops, sometimes connected to and involving a slam. So please help me welcome. So, yeah. I just want to say there are also um, audience survey forms that the Humanities Council would like us to offer to you to fill out if you would like. And there's good. So I was coming around the corner, and the car ahead of me has stopped. And I'm on sheer ice, and my car starts to skid. Mm -hmm. And there's this guy on the sidewalk with a shovel. And just before my car crunches into the car ahead of me, he throws a shovel full of sand under my rear tires. And my car comes to a stop 10 feet from disaster. Half an hour later, I'm at the Xerox machine with a job I've got to have copied in time for the mail, which leaves in 10 minutes. And the machine jams, and I'm trying to get the paper out, and something throws a spark, so smoke is starting to curl from the ink drum. And I'm trying to figure whether I should run to the men's room for a handful of water when this guy appears with a shovel, throws a shovel full of sand into the machine's underbelly, and the smoking stops. So I call that a poem. Uh, it's just a little flight of fancy that I had while I was driving into town about 30 years ago, coming down from Town Hill, that big curve. Uh, on North Main Street. You, you know that coming down. And as I was driving along, there was a guy sitting on, standing on the sidewalk talking to somebody else. He's leaning on a shovel. And I thought, if I started to skid, would he? And I wrote it as a piece of prose. It's not written as a poem, but I, it's a prose poem. Totally legitimate form of poetry. But what I want you to notice is that I didn't say, would you like to hear my poem? <laughs> I didn't uh, say, this piece is entitled <coughs> The Sand Man. Because my experience is that when you ask somebody if they'd like to hear your latest poem, their eyes glaze over <laughs> and they nod meaninglessly. So if you can suck them in, by, you know, just being more conversational. And then there's the problem, and then we'll get to this, which is how conversational can you get away with without being misunderstood? And how prissy do you need to be so that you are not misunderstood? And there's the sky on the sidewalk. What did I just say? Now, when I said the piece before, did you hear the way I wanted it to be? This guy on the side? No. You heard the sky. Yeah. So there's a problem right there, a real problem. I asked somebody, why don't people understand my poem? He says, I don't know about them, but for you, um, for me, he said, uh, 
I couldn't tell what the point was having sky on the sidewalk, <laughs> and I spent the rest of your time while you were reciting it trying to figure that out. So I think that's one of our main principles, and I'm really sorry, but at least I wasn't being prissy. This guy on the sidewalk with a shovel, it's hard. When you say, I love them all, <laughs> so it's a kind of an awareness well why do we want to recite poems in the first place notice the word poems instead of poetry you know there's kind of a difference poetry is a great art and poems are things so I like to talk about writing poems rather than writing poetry. Again, people, when they hear the word poetry, their eyes glaze over and they nod, so. Rachel. Yeah. And what's your name? Patricia. Say again. Patricia. Patricia, I'm half deaf, which makes me a terrific teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel. Patricia. And you are? Jennifer. That's Susan. Susan? Did I hear that? You did. Good for me. <laughs> Newton. Newton. Lois. Bruce. Bruce? Bruce. B R U C E? Yes. That's Bruce. <laughs> Julie. Ah. Uh -uh. Julie. One more time. Julie. Julie, J U L I E. You're a jewel. <laughs> oh, uh, Hannah? With an H on the end? Yes. I love it. It goes oh, back yeah. and forth. Palindrome. Yeah. Palindrome. Lee? L E I G H? No. L E E? I don't know why I thought it was Girls more to be spelled spelling. That way. I know you, but I don't know your name. Bob. B O B. <laughs> nice. Or Bobo. Another one that goes back and forth. And George. So very quickly, uh, how many people with a show of hands brought a poem with them that they want to work on today and say, Lee's got one, George has got one. Um, first letter of your name. First letter. J. J. Uh, I know it, Jennifer. Great. Did you bring, you brought something, Hannah? Good, good. So those who haven't, um, you, we're going to take good care of you. My theory is, when you're reading a poem, can you make it sound as if the words are occurring for the first time. Rather than when at night I ramble up the stairs into my room, visions of the days gone by, da da me, da loom. Can you go, when at night I ramble, you know, putting a, a more conversational approach to it, taking your time, unless you're a hip hop. And if you're hip hop, I can't keep up with you no matter what. I mean, hip hop poets, some Buddy Wakefield, anybody read him? Uh, man, or hear him. The images are phenomenal. It's just really wonderful stuff. But you can't piece it all together if you're as old as I am. So my theory is to try to make it seem as if the words are occurring for the first time. Most important to me is eye contact, is actually selling the poem by looking people in the eye, not going like this the way theater directors tell you, but actually trying to pick on people in the audience. Who's grabbing my shirt. <clears throat> so eye contact. I think it's important to have your hands loose at your sides. 
yeah, well, that, that's not loose. You know, but we're going to work on that. We spent a little bit of time with some younger ones today. They did real well with that. I think you want to be thinking about your body so that you're not swaying unless it's part of a poem, and even then, to kind of reduce all things that can distract visually from the words. And yet, we'll talk about gesture a little bit. There's always a temptation to overplay it. Today we had a kid who was writing a poem about eating, and he was, you know, minding eating. Every other gesture he did was a little bit more abstract and added something, but to actually uh, illustrate what you're saying, I think has to be done carefully. The face, can you bring the face into the poem? Well, if you're thinking of the words for the first time, your face is gonna naturally show expression. So that's kind of, even though you've rehearsed it 50 times, uh, you need to kind of remember that. And pacing. Can you vary fast and slow at appropriate moments? And that's it. We're going to do one together. And I'd like to, uh, I'd like to have these back. So please don't exit room. These are very valuable. We'll do the one that's right facing you. Set it backwards. There you are. So this is uh, Galway Canal's Blackberry Evening. And I'd like to hear each of you read it as if you are saying the words for the first time. And I don't want you to do it the way everybody else is doing it. I want you to be using eye contact even though you don't necessarily know the poem. That'll slow you down. And we'll all do it at the same time. So if you'll stand. Uh -oh. So remember, we're not doing this in unison. Use your own pacing for this, and we'll see who can make it last the longest on the count of three. A one, a two, a one, two, three, hit it. I squeeze, squinch open, and swerve well. 
Look at somebody long enough that maybe you can wink at them and maybe they'll wink back uh, just to play with it a little bit on the count of three. A one, a two, a one, two, three, hit it. I love to go out in late September. I love to go out in I see what it sounds like. We'll start with Bruce and then we'll go immediately to you and to Hannah and to Lee, etc. So Bruce, you get the first line. Hit it. I love to go out in late September. Among the fat, overripe, icy black blackberries. To eat blackberries for breakfast. The stalks very prickly. A penalty they earn for knowing the black art. A black <laughs> a blackberry baking as I stand among them. Uh, the black art of blackberry, oh, yeah, huh? Lifting the stalks to my mouth, the ripest berries. Fall almost unbidden to my tongue. Pass. As words sometimes do, certain peculiar words. Like strength and squinched. Many lettered, one syllable lumps. Which I squeeze. Squitch open and splurge well. Black Keep going. In a silent, startled, icy black language. A blackberry eating in late September. So, um, I think that would be fun to try again. And this time to work on the eye contact. And we'll start again with Bruce so that he knows, if he looks back at the page, he knows what his lines are going to be. And do I have your name, Julie, is that right? Yeah. Julie, you know what your lines are going to be. Maybe you could almost learn them by heart so that you're giving eye contact through. You've got it a little easier, Hannah, because I think there's only one line for you. Yeah. And Lee, you too, you got it, and so do I. Let's all learn our line by heart. <laughs> is it a line or three? Just that one line that you're gonna have to say. No, no, no just I'm, just kind of, I'm, I'm just not participating. That's oh, okay. Fine. But thanks for letting me hang out. Sure. <laughs> we ready? I'm watching you, Bruce. I love to go out in late September. Late in September. In late September. This may be hard. I know this is hard. This is difficult. I keep second guessing myself. Try again. I love to go out in late September. Among the fat, overripe, icy, black, black <laughs> To eat blackberries for breakfast. The stalks, very prickly, a penalty. They earn for knowing the black art. A blackberry making, and I stand among them. Lifting the berries to my mouth, the ripest berries. Fall almost unbidden to my tongue. As words sometimes do, certain peculiar words. Like strengths and squinched. Many lettered one syllable lumps. Which I squeeze, squinched. 
squinch open and splurge well in a silent, startled, icy black language of blackberry eating in late September. Nice job. Wow, give yourselves a hand. Yeah, I wish it was September. I like that poem. It's a good poem. It's a goodie, isn't it? Yeah. So now uh, I want you to look at the other three poems, or if you brought a poem that you yourself wanted to work on, get that out and start looking at it. And meanwhile, the rest of us, choose one of these other three poems to rehearse. Okay, everybody up with your poem. We're thinking about eye contact. We're thinking about pacing. We're thinking about facial. We're discovering these words for the first time. A one, a two, a one, two, three, hit it. When they say, when someone recognizes you in a grocery store, you're not safe for you, you become a When someone you haven't seen in 10 years appears at the door, or don't start seeing the color you saw, you'll never catch up. Walk around feeling like you're leaving, and no one can tell her anything. When I say, I think I know you, say no. Remember, you just have to be able to understand what parties are not. When someone you know, you're going to go to the grocery store, don't start singing all the door songs. A whisper on the empty kitchen stood with crumpled musical notes after the last song is finished. The party is over, but I will be sure to sweep the tiles before I leave. Dry the dishes and stash them neatly in the pantry. Put the chairs back and smooth the curtains. Turn off the radio. Close the door behind me. Listen to the quiet. Whisper, thank you for stopping by. I parked in the lot. The sign said I could be towed to bread heaven. All right, uh, 
there's always a moment when needed. A pause can create a dynamic interest in the audience. You know when you go to the racetrack to watch the cars go round and round and round, how people are leaning forward, hoping maybe there's an accident so that they can see some yeah. real action. Well, people that go to poetry readings are just dying to hear the poet screw up. <laughs> and so what I want you to do is I want you to pause long enough somewhere within the poem that your audience is going to think you've lost your place. Believe me, a pause in front of an audience always seems longer to the performer than it does to the audience. So I would say that long. Let them lean forward and wonder if you've lost your place. Now this <laughs> trick, once you know it, is so useful when you do lose your place. <laughs> So, but there's a point in a poem, it's called, well, John Charty calls it the fulcrum, a turning point in a poem. And maybe on the second reading, you'll discover that fulcrum and you'll make a nice long pause. On the count of three. A one, a two, a one, two, three, three. The art So much time without this. But this day we're not too great. Scarce for all my hunger sake. Someone telling you in a loud voice they once wrote a poem. Greasy sausage rolls on a paper plate. I have lost the party is over, but I will be sure to sweep the tiles before I leave, dry the dishes and stash them neatly in the pantry, put the chairs back, smooth the curtains, turn off the radio, close the door behind me, listen to the quiet, and whisper, thank you for stopping by. Give it up for Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, I think it's time to hear some solo presentations and uh, um, to make suggestions for how to make that solo presentation even better. Um, and uh, of course, I'm going to be barking about eye contact and about any kind of trapped hands. I want them just loose at your side. Of course, you're probably going to be holding your manuscript. So your one hand needs to be at your side, and the other hand can be holding the manuscript. Who will start? Hannah, will you start for us, please? Give it up for Hannah. Yeah. 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 Would you stand, please? Okay. You're, you're on stage now. Oh, okay. gosh. Yeah. I should have had coffee before this. <laughs> okay. I have packed your emotional baggage in trunks and left them on the front step for pickup at your earliest convenience. Don't knock at the door when you come searching for pieces of yourself that you stashed in my cabinets for safekeeping. I no longer inhabit this house you helped me to build. 
The rooms we painted lie empty, and I have left no forwarding address. Stamp your regrets, return to sender, and don't bother to slip the postcards of the travels we planned under the door. I have locked the garden gate and thrown away the key, even as I still remember. You gave me your spine when I could not stand alone. Rebuilt my shattered hourglasses when I thought my time was up. Patched the holes punched in the walls by the careless cruelty. The space lingering between our words where once we talked until three in the morning, a void that grew and grew in a static vacuum. And sometimes there is nothing left to say. Only the echo of the door slam, a whisper on the answering machine, the empty kitchen strewn with crumpled musical notes after the last song has finished. The party is over, but I will be sure to sweep the tiles before I leave. Dry the dishes, stash them neatly in the pantry, put the chairs back, smooth the curtains, turn off the radio, close the door behind me, listen to the quiet, Whisper, thank you for stopping by. Who wrote that poem? I did. You did. Oh my gosh, wonderful. Really good. Did you find a place to pause? So let's uh, all do it again and think of a place to pause. Okay, everybody up? Remembering eye contact? I'm going to be watching you for the pause. When you pause, when you find that place to pause, raise your hand and keep it up for as long as you are pausing. As soon as you start talking, put your hand back down, okay? On the count of three. A one, a two, a one, two, three, hit it. The poet no, the tumble, party is over, but I will be sure to sweep the tiles before I leave, decide dry the dishes, what to do. stash them neatly in the pantry, put the chairs back, smooth the curtains, turn off the radio, close the door behind me, listen to the quiet, whisper, thank you for stopping by. What's the title? Um, it's called uh, To Fairweather Friends. Oh. Nice. Friends that are only around like when things are good and then they kind of take off. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's a couple slams coming up. You know what slam is? You, you've been to slams. Yeah, I, I went to the one that was in St. Day after Oh, you did? Yeah, at the Kingdom yeah. Tap Room? Yeah. How was it? It was really good. Who was the <laughs> slam master? Uh, Bill Biddle. Who? Bill Biddle. Wonderful. Yeah. It was really yeah. fun. Did he read a poem too? He read a couple. Mm -hmm. Oh, I couple? think he did. Um, he didn't slam. He did uh, like the sacrificial first poem. Good. Good. <laughs> yep. So, what is the definition of slam? A slam is a cross between a literary tea and mud wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> and the idea is uh, 
that uh, people are selected at random from the audience to serve as judges and give scores to recitations of somebody's poems. And um, there's the traditional slam, and there's a traditional one coming up on the 21st, that's a Saturday, at the uh, Center for Learning and Arts at 46 Barry Street at 3.30 p.m. That's a slam that's going to feature some younger slammers especially, but it'd be fun to have some uh, older ones too. And then on the 25th, a Wednesday, at City Hall, Lost Nation Theater is presenting an Anything Goes Slam. You were there last year. Did you perform? I don't think so. But so yeah, I'll, except under duress of, of a game. That we were, were you a judge? I think, I think that's what I I think you were. Maybe this year you were. Good memory. I, what was the... Anything Goes means not only is the three minute time limit eliminated and lengthened to five minutes, but you can do anything. Now, at a slam, traditional slam, you need to be performing original work, stuff you wrote. At an anything goes slam, you could juggle. <laughs> you can sing a song. You can go up there with a choir and perform five minutes. You can read other people's poems. You can, in other words, covers. Or you can do your original work. So anything goes. And that's great fun. Uh, so is slam. Anyway, the idea of judging. Where is it going to be? Lost that's Nation. going to be at uh, Lost Nation Theater on yes. Wednesday the 25th, 7 p.m. But come to the Young One Slam, too, at 3.30 on Saturday the 21st. Right, Nadine? Yes. yes. Yeah. So, uh, Bruce, I want to hear something from you. I did, did A solo. Go ahead. Just from here? Whatever you choose. Okay. Please give it up for Bruce. You want to stand? Uh, sure. I love to go out in late September among the fat, overripe, icy blackberries to eat blackberries for breakfast. The stalks very prickly, a penalty they earn for knowing the black art of blackberry making. As I stand among them, lifting the stalks to my mouth, the ripest berries fall almost unbidden to my tongue, as words sometimes do. Certain peculiar words, like strengths or squinch, many-lettered, one-syllabled lumps, which I squeeze, squinch open, and splurge well into the, the silent, startled, icy black language of blackberry eating in late September. Wow, nice job. <laughs> there was a little drop-off in your voice when you got to the last word, September. Was there? Yeah, I, and I think probably you want to actually elevate those final words so that as a kind of a way of making sure the audience gets it, but also kind of announcing it's over rather than it's over. But I, you know, I exaggerate how much you dropped off. It wasn't big, but I need to say something that you can improve. <laughs> Lois, you got something? I did. I have a poem by Lucille Clifton was an African-American poet who died at the age of 73 in 2010. I looked that up in case anybody asked me. <laughs> so, and this poem doesn't have a title, so I'll just start. Some dreams hang in the air like smoke. Some dreams get all in your clothes and be wearing them more than you do. And you be half the time trying to wave them away. Their smell be all over you, and they get to your eyes, and you cry. The fire be gone, and the wood, but some dreams hang in the air like smoke, touching everything. You are all right. <laughs> Great pause. Did you lose your place? Not really, but I thought we should play. So uh -huh. I well, that's a really brave, long pause. Yeah, yeah it really works. Yeah. Julie! I want to hear from Julie! I picked a short one. 
Sure. 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 Because I'm short. My uncle, Great Norman, whose leg was full of finest German steel, broke three chairs and a table when the kids set off firecrackers on July 4th, 1946, just after apple pie. Ooh, all right, nice job. That's a hard poem to find a pause for. Maybe broke three chairs and a table on July 4th, 1946. I think after table was a good one because he was left wondering what happened. Can you do it now with that pause and you, and you can stay seated if you want, but you, okay. I want you to yell for me, okay? So that's hard for me. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we're doing is we're challenging ourselves. Okay. My uncle, Great Norman, whose leg was full of finest German steel, broke three chairs and a table when the kids set off firecrackers on July 4th, 1946, just after apple pie. Yeah, I think so. You found it. Good yeah. job. Yeah. No, Tim, what do you got? Oh. Pain in the back. <laughs> um. Tribute to slam poetry. I need a slam poem. My writer's mind is a blank sheet of paper. So eating alphabet soup is how I prepare to organize words. Randomly swallowed words arrange themselves in my throat and stomach. I'm not afraid to eat my words but it's scary to spit them out. I hear a crowd of words in my head. They mill around and thrash and look for a way to stampede onto the page where later they can slip away into the air, a spoken word poem heard by a gathering of people, some not quite sure about being here, Others already decided, not me, I'm not getting up there. But still they came to hear, and maybe, maybe some of you, did you not come to listen to poems, but not get caught speaking a poem you wrote, though you'd kind of like to see what judges an audience reaction might be. Yes, they feel it could be interesting and secretly think the best thing to happen would likely be the poem that they're not going to do. So they'll sit back and listen, pull up a chair till boom, They find out you be the judge. All poems to evaluate, and depending on the decision, hear audience cries of joy or derision. But it is better, is it not, when we get into it, take part, get involved. Now, sit around like a bump on a log, follow around a curious three-year-old who tastes the world and sips every drop of life as a new delicious flavor. Stand up and speak to your poem. What we do is what makes us who we are and together makes us more whole then we can say, life is fun. Yeah. Yeah. Good pause. Great pause. Lee, what's your response to the gesture he was using?
it seemed fairly nat it seemed fairly natural to me, mm -hmm. just like it was coming with the words coming out with it. Uh -huh. Did anybody think it was overdone? I thought it was very complimentary. It seemed because he hit it, and you had already pounded on that drum. Mm -hmm. Seemed absolutely to arise from the words of the poem. I probably would hold back on some of it just so that when you do it, it's a little bit more, you know, choose the moments for it. But, you know, I get stuck with them being able to see the words. Uh huh. And once I'm sure and tune back in, then. I can feel the flow. So there were a couple of moments I did get a bit lost. And I may have gestured wildly, like <laughs> reaching for a life buoy. <laughs> so let's try something new. You and Hannah Lee are going to be partners, and Julie and uh, Bruce are going to be partners, and Lois and uh, Newton are going to be partners, and Susan and Jennifer are going to be partners. And, uh, I'm abstaining. You can just be a partner with Rachel, and uh, Noni, you and I will be partners, and you two are partners. And one partner will stand, stand with me. One partner will stand next to the par other partner and hold for that partner the manuscript. Yeah. And then we'll do it again, and we'll switch, and my partner will hold for me. And, and for the sake of those of us that came in late, what is the it? It? We'll do huh. it. We're going to say again. our poem aloud. OK. All at the same time. Yeah. So if everybody will stand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, the reason we're doing this is so that your hands are totally free. And that therefore, uh, you're able to find gesture. You're able to resist the temptation to do funny things with your hands. Uh, on the count of three, I guess I was just going to start. No, I'm going to start. On the count of three. A one. A two. A one, two, three. Hit it. They say we should get together. Say why? I know longer in heaven this house. I'm trying to remember something. The rooms we painted lie empty, and I have lost our building. Tell them you have a new project. It'll never be finished. When someone recognizes you at a grocery store, not pay to send her, and don't bother. When someone you haven't seen in ten years, don't send her anymore. Safety and everything. Walk around feeling like you're being watched. Don't wait to find it. Go to Montaigne and throw this on the fire. You may find another star. I passed you a lot. The sign is in the wall by Carolyn's cruelty. Space lingering between our words where once we talked into three in the morning and sometimes there is nothing left to say. Only the echo of the door slam, a whisper on the answering machine, Kit empty kitchen strewn with crumpled musical notes after the last song is finished. The party is over, but I will be sure to sweep the tiles before I leave. Dry the dishes, stash them neatly in the pantry. Put the chairs back, smooth the curtains, turn off the radio, close the door behind me, listen to the quiet, and whisper, thank you for stopping by. I think it was 
Everybody get a chance? Yeah. We've been yeah. okay, great. Susan, oh, it's your turn to solo. It's my turn to yes. solo. Yes. I don't, um, if you want to pass your name, I'd love to hear it. Please put your hands together for Susan. <laughs> my uncle, Great Norman, whose leg was full of finest German steel broke three chairs and a table when the kids set off firecrackers on July 4th, 1946, just after apple pie. Here, here, here. <laughs> so stay up. Julie, will you stand too, please? I want to hear this as a duet. Don't try to stay together. You know, just experiment with what happens when we're hearing maybe echoes or who knows. On the count of three, a one, a two, a one, a two. Three, My, My uncle, uncle, Great Norman, Norman whose leg was, was full of finest German steel, broke three, three chairs and, and a table, table when the kids, when the kids set, set out firecrackers fire on July 4th, 1946, just after apple pie. Nice. That was fun. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer! far in the woods. Few know how to get there, but less know how to get back. If you're lucky, you'll find a tree. It was down in the storm of years past. The bark, it's rough against your hands. As much as I wander, I always seem to come back to this familiar place. How long has it been there? How long until it's gone? How many people have been here before me? Did they find the same hope I did? Sitting there with mud caked feet, small soft whispers of wind rattle the leaves. Skies turning a soft yellow. In the distance, you hear a giant, a gentle giant stir. To the left, a squirrel runs up a tree, knocking a twig down. It falls softly and lands on the ground. The damp earth, it smells different this time. It's hard to place. A little sweeter? No, a little crisper. Brittle, it's almost ready to break. Orange and pink hues rain down, kissing your cheeks. And you know that your time here is up. And the long journey home, it must start. But with every step farther away, you remember that place of peace far in the woods. Yeah, yeah. Is that your own poem? Yes. Nice. How'd you feel about it? <laughs> Mediocre. Say again? Mediocre. Mediocre? It's okay. What would you do better? I don't know. <laughs> 
I mean, I think you have it. I, I like the fact that your gesture is there, but it's, you know, it's not overwrought. Uh, it, it seems natural. Great eye contact. You could learn that poem by heart, right? Mm -hmm. Have you done that before? Learned the poem by heart. Say again? Done what? Learned the poem by heart? Yeah, and said it, you know, in front of people? Yeah. Was it hard for you? A little bit. Uh -huh. I went to a poetry reading by Cora Brooks, who I think is living in Montpelier now. This was 20 years ago at the Washington Public Library in Washington, Vermont. And she read for 45 minutes. And I noticed she never looked at her book or at her manuscript. She, everything was closed on the podium in front of her. She just gave it all like this. And when it was over, I went to her and I said, uh, how did you memorize all those poems? She said, I don't memorize. I learn by heart. I love mm -hmm. that. Isn't that nice? I mean, it just, if you learn by heart, you have all sorts of room to walk around within the poem. But if you're memorizing every word, you know, that, and that can be really confusing. So I would encourage you to, you know, learn that by heart and bring it on. Do you want to perform, Rachel? I do. I'm just going to take the poem. I'm going to take the poem off the wall. <laughs> Why don't go. she get to that? Yeah, it's got this there little This is an honor criticism for sure. It's an idea. It's like you had breaks in phrases, what not, that I liked, but they were very measured and consistent. You have some gorgeous phrases and words that if you change the almost perfect break rhythm, I would love to have heard a little more different rhythm but not necessarily a correct one, well, just, I don't like to. Right. Yeah, thank you. So, this is not my poem. Yeah. Um, this poem is called The Funeral. It's by uh, Reuben Jackson. Um, the Funeral for Jackie Jones. One. We have become the elders we saw at the funerals of our youth. Two, my old college friend's embrace still makes me cry. Three, I am no longer ashamed to quote scripture along with the minister. Four, bum rushed by sorrow and more middle-aged hugs. Five, there is so much I want to say. I feel it strongly, but I do not dare death is not that shy. Six, coffee wheel down the aisle, hysterical encore. I would have said five differently. You would have what? I would have said the number five differently. There is so much I want to say, I feel it strongly, but I do not dare. Death is not that shy. Uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've read this poem a few times. Yeah. Uh, I love the idea of saying it a different way. Let's all stand and say our poem twice. The first time, however you want. The second time, very differently. If you need to put a southern accent in, if you need to read it as fast as you say it, as fast as you possibly can, whatever you're going to do the second time, make it different on the count of three. A one, a two, a one, two, three, hit it. Someone telling you a 
talking about you know the words occurring for the first time it seemed like and that you know rather than you know a recitation it was you know part of a life that we were hearing George can we hear it for George please <laughs> Bruce Bruce do you know what the word needed means uh, yeah will you tell me to need something Pardon? Okay, there's another meaning too for when you're making bread. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, like you mix it all together. Mm -hmm. That's an indispensable part of the poem I just finished. And I'd want to make sure that I left anybody else because you don't see anybody needing bread very often nowadays. <clears throat> and this is something that will ring a bell. Uh, what's his name? Bruce? Bruce, does this ring a bell? Don't sit under the apple tree. No. Okay. How many does? To me. Okay. Okay, Bruce. Bruce? Okay. Don't sit under the apple tree. Sit over here with me. Seek safety and don't be led. That tree will drop apples on your head. Go to Montpelier and throw this poem on the pile. You may find another style. 
I parked in the law, the, the sign said that I could be towed. <laughs> the bread I had was damn well needed. Yeah. <laughs> One more time for us, George. Very thoughtful of you. <laughs> <laughs> don't sit under the apple tree, sit over here with me. Seek safety and don't be led. That tree will drop apples on your head. Go to Montpelier and throw this poem on the pile. You may find another style. I packed a lot. The sign said that I could be told. The bread I had was damn well needed. Yeah, okay. In other words, I brought the poem over and it, it got, uh, got needed. I wonder if you were to type that out well, and you know, large print. I I try to get as much size as I can on the page, so that when I'm in a situation, you never know sometimes what the venue where you're saying your poem, whether it's going to give you enough light. So I'm wondering whether if that were typed up, you would have an easier time really spilling it out. Uh, in the form that you want it to be. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Because hand, handwritten, you know, sometimes brand new poems. So yeah. I, I, I admire the fact that you are such a good performer. George often will tap dance as he is performing his poem. He, brought, he carries a board with him to slams, and uh, especially if there's a rug. We do this at the Aldrich Library quite often, and yeah. you'll you'll be dancing and saying your poem. At it's the same it's time. coming up soon. Right? Aldrich? Yeah, at the end of You're the right. Month. Yeah. The last Friday in April. Yeah, yeah. you should come. It's yes. Thank you for remembering that. Five minute anything goes. Say again? Five minute Anything goes. Oh, it's an anything goes slam at the Bring Aldrich. two poems or two poems. In case we have time, yeah. you would say. Yes. Are you doing it? You're, are you leading it? I'm sorry? Are you leading it? Yes. And so there'll be a, pre, a, a writing. A, There's a writing activity writing to start activity, it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's at 6 o'clock at the Aldrich Library on the last Friday of April. If you arrive at 6, you can have pizza and soda. And at 6.30, we actually start with a brief writing activity, and then people slam. Uh, and the last four or five times, we've had anything goes slams, which, which are really uh, quite a lot of fun. So yeah, there's something else to remember. Bob, I want to hear it from Bob. Well, this is a poem I wrote last year for my wife uh, for our 35th wedding anniversary. And I wasn't really going to say it, but I, I have a pride of authorship. So uh, in here, I mentioned something about a Roman poet. That's Catullus. Catullus wrote this famous po poem, uh, Dami Basia Mile, give me a thousand kisses, and then a thousand more, mm -hmm. and then we'll mix up the count. Uh, so at 5 and 30, we're remiss. So much time without a kiss. A kiss a day were not too great. Scarce would it my hunger sate. Let's make the Roman poet envy. We'll beat his bigly count in V. For it's not just a show of woo when I say I love you. For a kiss is not just a kiss. The song had it remiss. But heart questing joined the heart shy as time goes by. I forgot to mention also <laughs> that there's the song, uh, A Kiss Is Not Just a Kiss yep. As Time yeah. Goes you By. You must remember this. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And um, the Roman poet's poem is number five. Mm -hmm. V. V, yeah. OK. No. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
wife write a poem as well? Uh, no, no, she uh, suffers me, suffers my attempt. Did you get kissed? <laughs> well, once in a while. <laughs> I kiss a day. That's a pretty amazing manuscript. You know, after talking with George about typing it up, and you come up with a post-it note. I had this. No, I had this in my pocket. Uh huh. In my wallet. So good. I carry around some other poems too, not by me. Uh huh. Huh. So there's poem in your pocket. When is that? Yes. Oh, but there's one out there. Yeah. Does anyone know how to get to the MacArthur Grant people? <laughs> Google it. Let's see. Is it true that you founded Poem City? Oh, yes. And they're doing it all over the world now? Mm. They are. Okay. Yes, they are. Uh, Let's see. Poem City. You have got better eyes than me. <laughs> Oh, here it is. Uh, April, Thursday, April 26th is Poem in Your Pocket Day. Good. And you know, people are um, encouraged to find poems that they want to carry and recite to other people. We will have poems here um, at the library for people to pick up if they want. And you can go to Down Home Kitchen, and if you recite your poem in the restaurant to the people who are there, <laughs> you'll get a treat. <laughs> wow. Yeah, like that's that's so there's a new pocket day convenience. That's a new take. <laughs> right, that is a new take. That's on the 26th, on the 26th. Of Thursday. Yes. The day after our Anything Goes Slam at City Hall. That's right. Lee, can we put our hands together for Lee? visiting a friend at Children's Hospital. As I walk to your room, I see a child propped in a wheelchair connected to tubes and bottles. You tell me last night they rushed the boy across the hall into an oxygen tent. This morning, his room is scrubbed empty. We watch at the window as first snow kisses last flowers. Parents press a son's hand to warm off ice. In the hall, as we walk, a child's watercolor, yellow slabs, red sloshes, a green blobble, black creeping around the edges. Back in your room, afternoon sun nests in your wheat ripe hair, spatters against white walls, falls in prisms of beads, comets, fruit, puzzle pieces. You look up. On the elevator down, parents huddle in corners. Why won't anyone tell me? when you can go home. Yeah, yeah, nice job. <laughs> nice pause. Yeah, really good. And yeah, I don't know, anybody got suggestions for making it better? I, you know, really. Well, I just revised it. Say again? I just revised it while I was here. Uh -huh. It's a very old poem. I'm curious to know what you did or is that not what we're doing in this? Go ahead. Go ahead. What did you do when you revised it? Um, it'd probably be easier if I could show you. <laughs> I just, I mean, I literally did it while I was here. I, I rearranged, I changed the title a little. I rearranged things. Um, I, yeah. Changed, you know, a word here and there. I changed a line here and there. I moved this from there to here. Actually, I skipped that that section because I forgot to see my arrow. I had one little piece. Have having done that, and then you read it. Do you like the changes? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I hadn't even read it in years. It's a really yeah. old one, um, and I just I, I I was at the slam the other night, 
and I thought, this is really different from how I've been writing, and it's like, oh, I don't know. And then I thought, oh, you know, I used to write some poems that were more like that, that were more personal, in a sense, um, and conveyed maybe more emotion rather than rational kinds of things. So I just, I pulled some of them out and thought, I'm going to take one and revise it. So it's the first time I've worked on it in decades. Literally. I mean, I haven't even seen it in most of that time. I don't, it's amazing I found it. But, so. Okay, one last all-group rehearsal. Think about eye contact. If you can do without holding the poem, all the better. Hands loose at your sides. Experiment with gesture. Have fun with it. On the count of three. A one, a two. Oh, two, three, yeah. I As you run away the key, even as I remember, she gave me the divine. I could not stand the Lord. We built my shattered hourglass, and I thought my time was up. She punched the attached the holes and punched in the walls by careless people. Don't start singing along your new songs. You'll never catch on. Walk around feeling like a leaf. No, you can tumble any second. Then decide what to do with your tongue. I like the fan. Well, Rachel, thank you for hosting us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. For all of you for coming and doing thank such you. a great thing. Thank you, Rebecca, for recording this for posterity. I need these manuscripts back. Thank you for doing it. I like your choice of color. Thank you. Oh. 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 Oh.